All right, midnight here, and I'm going to walk you through making a simple rotation. So I like to switch to the 3D full screen. If you hold down Command on a Mac, you rotate around. Let's make a simple mesh. You can apply the rotation to anything, and we're going to move it to the middle here, make it white and rotate it flat. Like I said, you can apply this process to any geometry. I'm just going to use a simple plate mesh. Now let's pull up a few menus. Hierarchy, Object Properties, and Animation Time, which is the animation slider. So the first thing we need to do is switch to object mode and go make animation group and hit the little plus sign and you can see the object mesh inside the animation group it has to be inside an animation group in order for the animation to have any effect on the object so now go to make rotation and you see a little yellow line there that is the rotation vector. Now let's line it up with one of the edges. And if you switch to vertex mode here and select one of the corners by shift and click, and now move them together, and it automatically aligns it with that edge there. Switch back to object and deselect, and now select the rotation again. And we still have got nothing down here, which means we need to enter in a number here. So put in 60 or any angle, really. Now we've got a hinging door. All right, now that we've made this rotation, I'm going to point out a few details that you need to know about these windows that I've pulled up. X-Plane Object Properties tells you the properties of the object that you have selected. You can name it anything you want. We can call this Rotation Canopy if you were using this to animate the opening of a canopy on a jet or some other airplane. And the name shows up here and that can be handy if you have a lot of different animations and helps you keep track of them. If they were all called ro rotations, then you would get cross-eyed pretty quick. Value 0 and value 1 are the endpoints of the data ref that you are tying this animation to. The data ref is picked here by this pull-down menu, and you have access to just about every data ref that X-Plane outputs, I think. So you need to sift through there and pick one out that you want to drive your animation. Value 1 is usually 1, value 0 is usually 0, and those simply correspond to the minimum and maximum values of whatever data ref you're using. Angle 0, angle 1 obviously correspond to their uh, values 1 and 0, and they're the position that you want your animation to be at when the data ref is at the corresponding values and you can play around with different values in there and see what it does. A X-Plane animation, this animation time window here, this will display all the different animations that you have. If you have a bunch of translations and rotations and they all are tied to different data refs, they will be displayed here and you can drag them and move them independently and see how they move and test out your animations before putting it into X-Plane. Alright, now that we've made a simple rotation, I'm going to show you what you can do with rotations. To illustrate that, we're going to use the Longsword Interceptor, my first model that I ported from Halo to X-Plane. So rotate around under here, we see the ramp door, and that is actuated by Ramp Door Transit. And what do you know, it works. So 
let's hide the body so we can see a little better. Now, these are the data refs that the animations are linked to. These particular ones are custom data refs that come from a plugin that Mr. Sandy Barber was nice enough to write for me for this project and my other Halo projects. And they simply are regular data refs that make things move. They work just the same as any other X-Plane data ref uh, as far as animation goes, so don't let them confuse you. Now if you look over here, we've got the hierarchy window showing all of the animation groups and the objects and the animations. This guy is our sort of anchor rotation. He affects these two rotations because they are in the same animation group. And these two guys come after this guy, sort of like layers in a Photoshop file. The things below are affected by the things above, and vice versa, or, well, not really. Anyways, you can see that effect as you watch the two lower rotation vectors moved by the ones above. And then, of course, the objects are layered in the same way, so that they are affected by the proper rotations at the proper time. All this is kind of trial and error, a little bit of lateral thinking, and you can do just about anything with rotations and translations in X-Plane. Now let's look at the properties window. If we select one of these rotations, we can see that it's tied to this ramp door transit data ref and Mr. Sandy Barber has given the max value as 99 so we put that in there normally for regular standard x-plane data refs this value would be a 1 and angle 0 and angle 1 are simply the angles that I want this arm right here to travel between and that's something that you can change and to suit your needs. If we select this ramp door here you can see that its rotation vector has different values. Still 99 for the ramp door transit data ref but the 16 and the negative 21 define what angle the ramp actually rotates between. Now these two animation groups are separate, but I've played with the angles so that they look like they work together. And that's the kind of thing that you just have to sort of try and work out till it works for you. And that's just one of the things that you can do with rotations in X-Plane.